Welcome to Conversations with the Winners. I'm Jacinta Goda, here on behalf of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And today our conversation is with Melissa Robinson. Melissa is Executive Director of the Black Health Care Coalition. Melissa is also a winner of the 2021 Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Award for Health Equity. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me. Let's start talking about the big picture, the mission of the Black Health Care Coalition, and um, more specifically, the focus of the work, your award winning work. Um, absolutely. The mission of the Black Healthcare Coalition is to eliminate health disparities. And we do that through three ways. We look at advocacy, so policies and laws that need to be changed to address the systemic approach. We look at access to healthcare in our safety net healthcare system and making sure that that is strong and viable and meaningful to the community. And then health promotion, whether it's women's health, whether it's men's health, we work um, prostate cancer, diabetes. Um, there are so many areas, as you know, that health disparities um, need to be addressed in our community. We do a um, extremely extensive work with aging and dementia and Alzheimer's specifically. So we're looking at all of those health disparities are, and we continue to be uh, courageous and curious about what do we need to do to apply a health equity approach so that we can get parity as it relates to health outcomes. Let's talk a little bit about the focus of your work as it relates to infant mortality. Um, absolutely. And so we know that African American babies are twice as likely to die before their first birthday in comparison to um, the white Caucasian community. And so we're working to address infant mortality and um, achieve parity in that area. One of the things that we work on is making sure that there's a strong navigation and support through the um, healthcare system. We found that over a half of our families when we first started this work weren't keeping all of their prenatal appointments. And a lot of that was no fault of their own. And so we built a system of support for them in that way. The other thing is really looking at the social determinants of health. We work with our families for at least seven years. So after baby is born, so that we can make sure that there's secure housing, that there's full employment, that there's reliable transportation. And we know that those things take time. We know that babies don't come with manuals. And so we are working with experts um, across the country to address parenting, uh, to ensure that uh, young people have the best outlook that they could possibly have. Let's, let's talk a bit about health equity and systems change. Can you talk to us a little bit about your approach to this issue? Absolutely. Well, we try to center um, system change around the voices and stories of the people who are most impacted. It's a very grassroots approach. It's a very door to door talking with families about their experiences and what does viability look like to them. So, for example, um, education is critically something that kept coming up as we talked to families um, and the families did research around what is the best way that in, from a policy or governance lens that we can make sure that young people are continuing their education? And one of the things were 529 plans uh, and parents came up with that. And they came up with really looking at how um, policies could be developed to address the communication, the education around um, 529 plans. So those systems change need to be really rooted in the voices of the people that you're working with. And we need to stop coming with solutions, but come with questions. One of the things, policies that we've worked on with infant mortality is making sure that um, through the insurance system, that families have access to more culturally congruent, culturally competent healthcare services. Uh, but we found that a lot of our families, uh, they didn't feel welcome, they didn't feel listened to, they didn't feel heard. And, and so that creates um, an opportunity for us to figure out how do we change the system to create better outcomes. 
Talk a little bit about some of the innovative approaches that you've taken. I was very impressed by some of those um, practices that are really a little out of the box. Talk to us about that. Absolutely. So one of the things we do is uh, community baby showers where we're um, celebrating women, we're celebrating expecting families, we're bringing them in to make sure that they have access uh, to the supports that they need, um, that we are um, talking to them about their own empowerment and not just sharing with them a set of things that they need to do, but really helping them to discover that they have everything within them in order to achieve the destiny that they're, they're wanting and that they're seeking. Take us behind the scenes. Take us to the real lives of some of the women that you serve and their families. Well, they're really focused on really making it day to day. Many of our families have multiple children within their family. And so they uh, have a lot of responsibilities. And so we're really one of the things we focus on is full employment, making sure that they take time to really think about what their earning potential is. The other challenge that we see oftentimes is single parent families. You know, there are a lot of stories around one person that is taking on the weight of rearing an entire family themselves and are oftentimes unaware of the things that are available uh, to them. And, um, the, the conversations we just had about um, seatbelt safety. Over 80% of the families had babies that were not appropriately fastened in. We did, during COVID, we did um, drive through baby showers. Hmm. You also have some, some very... Um... Uh, impressive results of your effort. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, the majority of our families, they make it to the first birthday. And that's what we, our goal is, is to make sure that um, baby makes it to one. And we know that survivability, you know, is, is high after that. And then also we, we measure our preterm babies. uh, And so we're, we have really great results in um, babies being full term and we are doing a great job as it relates to our babies uh, now are going into preschool. So we wanna make sure 100% of our babies have a strong early education start. They just need the supports to help them get there. For example, we do a program with our expecting families called I'm a Survivor. And they talk about things, challenges that they have Um, Now, whether it's related to uh, anxieties or fears related to baby coming or other relationship issues or housing. So oftentimes it's just about perspective in having that 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 group of people that you can talk to. And that's what empowerment is. It's about really uncovering one's own strength and being interdependent that you're not alone. Talk about some of the big lessons learned to share with our listeners today? Absolutely. I think we've been around for over three decades, and I think the biggest lesson that we've learned is really about censoring the voices of the people who are most impacted. We may not know all of the answers, and we had to reorient and recenter our um, curiosity that wasn't always dependent upon the latest referee journal article but more centered around what do people need? What are people asking for? Yes, research is important. It's a critical part of what we do because that's a way that we can learn lessons from you know, all over the country, all over the world, right? But we have to center it into what does that mean for the people who come through our doors? And how do we start with that first? So what does this award mean to you, Melissa, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Award for Health Equity? Oh, well, it means that we're on the right track. It provides a level of credibility to our work. It provides a level of energy to tell us to keep going uh, and not to give up. And just the highlight on health equity, just that alone is really critical because oftentimes 
we are in spaces where people don't want to address it. So it, it, it means a great deal. Right. Melissa Robinson, on behalf of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the National Civic League, congratulations on your award. Thank you so much. I'm extremely appreciative. And thank you so much for allowing this small organization to share with you our work. Thank you for joining us for this conversation and you are invited to more conversations with the 2021 winners of the RWJF Award for Health Equity. And you can learn more about all of the winners at rwjf.org. I'm Jacinta Goda and thank you for watching.